It's a new day here in Bangalore and a new chance to explore something more interesting. Let's explore some of the more tourist attractions out here because I think there is a rich heritage to be explored in Bangalore. At my back is the Bangalore Palace. This palace is really, really well maintained. If you get a chance to visit Bangalore, this should be first on your list. by the one of the guards that the king was staying here till the year 2000 so let's go and explore the palace the entry fees to visit this palace is rupees 230 per person for indians and rupees 460 per person for foreign tourists this palace is closed for the public on Mondays. The timings of this palace are 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. The construction of this palace was started in 1874 by the king Chambaraja Wadiyar and is today open to the public. It houses several remarkable paintings belonging to the 19th and 20th centuries. Inside the palace, we can see several pictures that chronicle the various generations of the Wadiyar dynasty. This palace has several attractions to keep us busy for a long time and houses a collection of 30,000 photographs. It all takes us back to those times in history when luxury was a lifestyle. There are unique artifact chandeliers, wooden staircases and unique carvings inside and outside the palace. chance to know how the family members of warriors used to live their royal lives in the castle. In addition, there is also an audio tape with headphones for people to understand the history of Bangalore in detail. This audio tape is available in both Hindi and English. Palace offers its exotic lawn and banquet area for wedding celebrations. The sprawling grounds surrounding the palace, called the Palace Grounds, serve as a popular venue for several musical and cultural events. These grounds have hosted a number of international musicians and bands like Backstreet Boys, Rolling Stones and Enrique Agliases. It was a very pretty experience out here. was great fun of course it was very sunny out here and i think the kids are getting troubled with that scorching sun out here after so many days and we have not even experienced the heat of uh, karnataka and today i really feel very very hot over here so now is the time for some paid puja as every one of us is very hungry we are walking 
all the way on the roads of Mangaluru to find some good eatery. but our kids are more more habitual of eating the main course so we are planning to move from the beer club to another place which they only told us that is umpire so it's a walkable distance we asked some of the locals they said that it's a good eating joint for the non-vegetarian lovers on our way we saw this traffic themed kids park this is a great little quite local park idol for kids below 10 years of age. It is meant to help familiarize young ones with traffic signals and rules. This park has a traffic theme and has plenty of space for young kids to ride cycles and scooters safely. yet another change in program and we were here at the Boring Institute which is a private member club that was founded by Benjamin Lewis Rice in the year 1868. It has a lavish parking and makes us travel back in time and experience Bangalore's colonial past. institute has 167 affiliated clubs across India and overseas, out of which one is the Jalandar Gymkhana Club. This institute, the preserve from the British times, is a center of all major social activities and has one of the largest libraries rooted in history and heritage that deliver a truly unforgettable experience. Bowring reflects the 
tradition of Indian hospitality to create lifelong memories. Travelling through the MG road, we booked an auto for the Sri Radha Krishna Chandra Temple, which is one of the largest Krishna Hindu temples in the world. ISKCON Bengaluru is a part of charitable society with the aim of propagating Krishna consciousness through his teachings of Bhagavad Gita. This temple is open from 4.30 am to 5 am, then 7.15 am to 1 pm and 4 pm to 8.30 pm. Located on Hare Krishna Hills in the North Bengaluru, it is well connected to various parts of the city through different modes of transport. A 7-acre hillock with a huge rock in the midst of it was allocated to the ISKCON Temple authorities on August 3, 1988. Construction of ISKCON Temple began in full swing in the year 1990 and it took 7 years to accomplish the construction. The most distinctive feature of this temple is its gold-plated flag post which stands at the height of 17 meters. ISKCON Bengaluru has six shrines. The ISKCON Temple and Cultural Complex were inaugurated by the then President of India, Dr. Shankar Deyal Sharma. neoclassical style of architecture, the Iskon temple is embellished with the most exquisite style of stone carvings. The temple has impeccable food and prasadam services within the complex.
Midday meal schemes are provided to underprivileged children in partnership with the government and government aided schools. distribution of Shri Krishna Prasadam to all visitors during the darshan hours. I really think so that you must have enjoyed my trip of Bangalore with me and I really wish that I can explore more heritage places in India. So guys stay tuned I will try to visit Mysore and explore the rich heritage of Mysuru. So See you in my next video guys and as I always request that in case you have not yet subscribed to my channel, kindly consider. See you in my next video guys.